All right, guys, welcome back to the traditional channel. Today, we're we'll going to talk about lecture number 21, conservative or neoliberal, Oakchef and Hayek. From the viewpoint of conservatives and classical liberals, the source of the horrors of the mid-20th century was clear. The granting of overwhelming power to the modern state, partly through the abandonment of individual liberty in favor of a part paternalistic governmental power to organize society and economy, economy, and probably through the commitment to immense military power, which always enhances the state. This discussion is the central background for the political arguments of the late 20th century. In this lecture, we will see the post-war basis for conservatism and libertarianism, or neoliberalism. Michael Oakeshott the most thoughtful English conservative of the 20th century was Michael Oakeshott, whose most famous political work is his 1947 essay, Rationalism in Politics. The essay describes the belief that political behavior can be deduced from abstract universal principles discoverable by unaided reason. This belief asserts the independence of the individual's reason and seeks to engineer social improvement. It believes armchair political theories should decide what principles are best for any society and impose them. This attitude is what Oakeshott is against. Oakeshott insists that politics is not the kind of thing that can be engineered. It is a particular set of practices and habits of a given society, rightly guided by practical knowledge. Rationalist claims should be understood as abridgments of practical knowledge. Consider the analogy of a recipe. Recipes are useful to the expert cook as reminders, but those with no cooking skills cannot produce what the chef does by merely following the recipe. Recipes are useful, but the danger is in forgetting the recipe's inadequacy. The same is true for abstract political principles, just as political power derives from the consent of the governed, they are mere abridgments. Moral ideals have significance only in a tradition of behavior a morality is like a language. History in the context of human affairs, theoretical knowledge is inadequate to human affairs because of the dependence of issues on one another, that is, what we politically ought to do in the current situation in a given place is dependent on what was done yesterday and the day before. Human action in general and political action in particular are historical. The kind of intelligibility human events have is called contingency. The rules of conduct in a civil society are adverbial, stating how to pursue goals, not which goals to pursue in a republican society the rules of conduct are the adverbial rules of civil society, how citizens relate to each other as they pursue their goals. The function of the law and legislation is to codify, adjudicate, and apply such rules, especially in difficult cases. Oakeshott is, an, in effect, a conservative civil society theorist. For Oakeshott, politics is the practice of attending to the arrangements of a given society. The definition is vague, with no goal and no principle, as it should be for Oakeshott. Friedrich von Hayek, the most famous defender of classical liberalism, hence free market capitalism, was the economist Friedrich von Hayek. Hayek achieved fame with the Road to Serfdom, an analysis of socialism, but the constitution of liberty is his greatest contribution. Hayek thought was Hayek's thought was heavily influenced by the theory of Ludwig von Mises, who asserted that socialist central planning is not merely wrong or immoral but impossible. A free economy is millions of local decisions made by producers and consumers which generate a continually changing set of principles. The price of mechanisms stores and summaries the knowledge embodied in all those decisions. No central planner can have the knowledge without the freely moving price mechanism. Hayek agrees. He argues for a liberal free market. Liberalism is a political order that aims to make best use of spontaneous forces of a free society. But Hayek specifically rejects laissez-faire 
that was mistaken for self-description of some 19th century liberals. Free market liberalism requires an institutional framework, most obviously the rule of law, which Hayek always emphasized. This means that the right or illegal neutral framework has priority over the good or centrally planned state ends. It means citizens should enjoy formal equality, equality before the law, not substantive material or outcome equality. Like Peter Drucker, Hayek blamed fascism on socialism. Socialism provoked the belief in a society where risk is eliminated and equality granted, but this could be approached only in a nationalist, militarist form. Hayek's basic ideas. Unlike many other libertarians or minimal state supporters, Hayek is an avowed anti-rationalist. Knowledge is always limited, and progress in civilizations depends on allowing huge numbers of people to deploy their local knowledge as they say fit. Central planning can never be as intelligent or produce as much social evolution as local freedom. Free society is based in part on spontaneous or polycentric order versus the rational planning of the French tradition and the utilitarians. Hayek rejects these as models of top-down administration. He says that the English notion is, essentially, trial and error and selective retention of what is successful. But we can only know after the fact, experimentally, what is most beneficial, we discovered it, and advance only in granting freedom to all. In justifying free markets, Hayek makes clear that we must take the good with the bad. There will always be inequality. Those with more resources are freer to experiment, producing novel uses of their knowledge and benefiting all. We can always take action to improve the conditions of those who are far less well, but we cannot eliminate inequality. Hayek on the nature of freedom. Hayek sought to clarify the nature of freedom and the value of the market society. Freedom is the liberty to pursue one's aims or pur purposes based in responsibility and resourcefulness. Hayek held that there are no solely economic values, rather economics is the means of achieving value in itself. This implies that egalitarian or progressive liberals are wrong when they try to affirm liberty in politics and personal life, but then say that economics is to be governmentally controlled. To control economics is to control the means by which people pursue any goals, hence it interferes with all freedom. Hayek points out that equality before the law and factual outcome inequality are incompatible. To establish outcome equality between two people, they must be treated equally. For example, the higher achiever must be regulated and his or her income must be redistributed. To treat people equally before the law guarantees that different people with different talents, skills, levels of ambition, interests, and purposes will become factually unequal. Law, therefore, must be formal. It must not dictate ends but how ends may be pursued. Freedom is obedience to merely formal rules. Freedom isn't unruled. It is ruled abstractly by forms or adverbial constraints. Hayek makes the point that liberal capitalist society is not a meritocracy. The only way to enforce a meritocracy would be to have a committee of experts that judge people's merit. Making money is partly merit, but it may also be luck, inheritance, or unequal circumstances. Instead of merit, the principle of distribution in a free society, Hayek says, is value. Value means whatever someone else is willing to pay for the services of good you produce. In other words, value to others. But Hayek doesn't argue for total absence of government intrusion in markets. First, government must enforce law and prevent monopolies. Second, the state enterprise is inevitably in some fields such as sanitation, health, and public works. Unions are fine for Hayek if not granted monopolistic legislation. Again, the danger is not that groups organize for their interests, but that they may petition government to coerce others to buy from them. As to social welfare, Hayek's view is practical and nuanced. There is a strong case for re reducing inequality of opportunity without destroying its personal and chance character, and there is no reason that welfare, including health care and other services payments, should not increase as societies becomes richer. The worst thing is for government to fix prices, wages or production schedules or grant monopolies to a set of workers or producers, all of which would make the economic process immune to the knowledge that emerges only in spontaneously order markets. Conservatism. 
In recent decades, the term conservative has become referred to anyone who wants less government intervention, especially in the economy or in redistributing econ econ income. But this term includes different positions, free market liberals, libertarians, or neoliberals, such as Hayek. Traditionalist conservatives, sometimes called paleoconservatives, such as Oakeshott, and religious and evangelical conservatives who are concerned with moral and cultural values. These three groups can agree on some issues, but definitely disagree on others. Hayek saw this and discussed it in the postscript of the Constitution of Liberty, titled Why, am I, Why I Am Not a Conservative. Hayek shares Oakeshott's anti-rationalism, just as Oakeshott shares belief in the value of spontaneous order, and both object to government intrusion into the traditionally self-organized institutions and domains of social life. But Hayek objects to conservatism for its apparently mystical as opposed to skeptical attitude, its fears of spontaneous change, its love of authority and elites, and its antipathy to new knowledge. Hayek is a kind of classical liberal, sometimes called a neoliberal, and Oakeshott is a traditionalist conservative, but they have a common opponent, activist progressive government. These two viewpoints have fueled conservative politics ever since. Neoliberalism What would the neoliberal or libertarian position actually do? Milton Friedman's Capitalism and Freedom is a good example, more concerned with policy than Hayek. In principle, the government's job is to handle security, the courts, and the printing of money. All else is to be done by free contract. However, in practice, economic libertarianism, such as Friedman saw government interference as a matter of degree. Government monopoly provision of a service is the worst. Government non-monopoly provision is less bad, and so on. There should be no close union shops, that is, legislation require employees to join a union, that is, just a monopoly. Instead of occupational licensure, the government could keep a registry of educational certification for those providers who have earned educational credits or pass an exam. Like Hayek, Friedman recognized that some utilities must be regulated because they tend to techni technical monopoly. Government may have the, to own certain pieces of infrastructure, such as roads. Most of the functions of the federal and state government would disappear, but so would the military draft, drug laws, punitive taxes on smoking, and so on. In some libertarian views, cut against business, Friedman argued that all corporate profits should be taxed as individual income. The point is to regulate economic activity through a freely moving price mechanism, just as is practically possible all right guys so i hope you like this new video and let me know about the quality of the videos let me know if you like the sound if you <laughs> like anything else and well now guys uh see you later till next video